There are some things in science where you obviously hit up against moral questions and questions of responsibility about what you do with your findings. I have never done the kind of science where, you know, I potentially discover an atom bomb or a cure or, or any of that kind of thing. But there have been times when I have had to confront questions about the effect of, of telling what I've found to people. One of these in particular concerns near-death experiences. I did a lot of work because of the out-of-body experience that I had many, many years ago that set me off doing all this. Um, I later became interested in near-death experiences. And it's known that many people, when they come close to death, have very, not very, but somewhat consistent experiences, which tend to include going down a dark tunnel towards bright light, um, floating out of the body and being able to see what's going on as though from above, um, encountering some kind of barrier which you, you feel if you go through you, you would never come back, um, maybe encountering beings of light or religious figures or, or, or people who've died. And I studied these experiences and talked to people who'd had them and written, wrote, wrote a book about them. Now, I became increasingly convinced that we already have the science to understand quite well why and how a lot of these things come about. We can understand the tunnel and the, and the bright light in terms of what's happening in the visual cortex at the back of the brain when, um, when one's under a severe stress or when there's lack of oxygen or when there's other reasons why you get random firing of, of neurons going on in that part of the brain. We can understand the noises in, in a similar kind of way. The kinds of hallucinations that you get are probably happening from activity in the temporal lobes. And, and I try to piece all these things together and investigate them and so on. The upshot of all this is that you don't need the theory that these experiences are evidence of life after death. You know, it, it, as far as I'm concerned, experience comes about through having, a, you know, there being a brain doing certain things. This kind of experience is because of this is happening in the brain. And, um, and when the brain is dying, of course, it produces these strange experiences. As far as I'm concerned, I am convinced that when the brain stops all activity, any personal awareness, I'm not talking about wider kinds of consciousness, but any personal idea of me going on existing doesn't make any sense anymore. And that's the end. Now, near-death experiences can never be decisive evidence for life after death or not. You know, I could explain everything in terms of what happens in the brain, but there'll still be life after death. Um, or, or, or the reverse, you know, that there might not be. I can't prove it either way. But by saying all of this, by presenting the evidence as I see it, and by explaining why I don't think there is life after death, I realize that I upset huge numbers of people. I get a lot of mail from people who are outraged and upset. Worse than that, there is evidence that, from, from studies not of my own, that other people have done, that people who believe in life after death are happier, more content facing death, and, you know, feel less stress in the thought of death, and so on. So, essentially, by saying the truth as I see it, I am depriving of people of that, you know, comforting illusion. Well, I say I'll deprive them. I mean, in the end, it seems to me that it is better to live with the truth than falsehood, however comfortable the falsehood is and that seems to me actually a very strong strong principle that so far I, I have always tried to apply whether I will hit some situation where I think that it isn't valid anymore I don't know and I would have to rethink that but that's what I chose and I take on if you like the responsibility for uh, the effect of th that those views will have and the only justification is that I do my absolute best to try and make it the truth as best I can find it